Welcome to the Daily Quiz Podcast. Today's category is Art and Literature. Let's get to it. Question 1. He wrote Ulysses, Giacomo Joyce, Dubliners, and Finnegan's Wake, among others. The answer is James Joyce. James Joyce, the brilliant Irish writer, penned masterpieces like Ulysses, Giacomo Joyce, Dubliners, and Finnegan's Wake. Known for his experimental writing style and complex narratives, Joyce's works continue to captivate readers with their intricate wordplay and exploration of human consciousness. Question 2. Who choreographed West Side Story? The answer is Jerome Robbins. Jerome Robbins, the brilliant choreographer behind West Side Story, had an unconventional way of creating dance sequences. He would often ask his dancers to improvise movements while he observed from a distance, secretly taking notes. Later, he would meticulously piece together these spontaneous moments to create the iconic dances we know and love today. Question 3. Who wrote the Canterbury Tales? The answer is Geoffrey Chaucer. Geoffrey Chaucer, the brilliant mind behind the Canterbury Tales, was not just a writer but also a man of many talents. In addition to his literary prowess, he served as a diplomat, bureaucrat, and even a customs officer. Talk about multitasking. Question 4. Which great artist did Francois I bring from Italy to Amboise in France? The answer is Leonardo da Vinci. Francois I, the king of France during the Renaissance, was a great admirer of art and culture. In his quest to enhance his court's prestige, he invited the legendary artist Leonardo da Vinci to Amboise in France. Da Vinci spent his final years there, creating masterpieces like Mona Lisa and The Last Supper, leaving an indelible mark on French art history. Question 5. Who is recognized for his peculiar style of poetry known as nonsense verse? The answer is Edward Lear. Edward Lear, the master of nonsense verse, was not only a poet but also an accomplished artist. His whimsical and imaginative poems, like The Owl and the Pussycat, delighted readers with their playful language and absurd characters. Lear's unique blend of humor and creativity continues to captivate audiences to this day. Question 6. What did Michelangelo paint on the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel? The answer is The Last Judgment. Michelangelo's masterpiece on the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel is widely known, but did you know that it took him four years to complete? The Last Judgment, painted between 1536 and 1541, depicts the second coming of Christ and is considered one of the greatest works of art in history. Question 7. Whose advice was, when I am dead, my dearest, sing no sad songs for me? The answer is Christina Rossetti. Christina Rossetti, the renowned English poet, offered a unique piece of advice in her poem Remember. She urged her loved ones not to sing sad songs for her after she passed away. Instead, she wanted them to remember the happy times they shared. A beautiful reminder to celebrate life even in times of loss. Question 8 from the Hebrew word for profit. A group of French painters active in the 1890s who worked in a subjective, sometimes mystical style, stressing flat areas of color and pattern. The answer is Nabis. 
The Nobbies, a group of French painters from the 1890s, derived their name from the Hebrew word for prophet. These artists embraced a subjective and mystical style, emphasizing flat areas of color and pattern in their works. Their unique approach to painting challenged traditional techniques and paved the way for modern art movements. Question 9. Which writer moved to England in 1977 and whose work includes Mother Tongue, The Lost Continent, and Made in America? The answer is Bill Bryson. Bill Bryson, the renowned American writer, made a bold move in 1977 by relocating to England. Known for his witty and insightful observations, Bryson's work spans various genres. From his humorous memoir The Lost Continent to the linguistic exploration of Mother Tongue and the travelogue Made in America, he continues to captivate readers with his unique perspective on both sides of the Atlantic. Question 10. Which famous book contains the line in a hole in the ground there lived a The answer is The Hobbit. The famous book that contains the line in a hole in the ground there lived is none other than J.R.R. Tolkien's beloved fantasy novel, The Hobbit. This iconic opening sentence introduces readers to the whimsical world of hobbits and sets the stage for an epic adventure filled with dragons, dwarves, and a courageous hobbit named Bilbo Baggins. So grab your walking stick and join Bilbo on his journey through Middle-earth. Question 11. Which poet's work includes Just Give Me a Cool Drink of Water Before I Die? The answer is Maya Angelou. Maya Angelou, the renowned American writer and poet, captivated readers with her powerful words. In her collection of poems titled Just Give Me a Cool Drink of Water Before I Die, she delved into themes of love, loss, and resilience. Through her evocative verses, Angelou left an indelible mark on the literary world. Question 12. He penned the founding novel of the utopian genre, Utopia. The answer is Sir Thomas More. Sir Thomas More, the author of Utopia, not only introduced the concept of a perfect society but also coined the term itself. Interestingly, Utopia is a combination of two Greek words, OU, meaning no or not, and topos, meaning place. So, in essence, Utopia literally means no place. Question 13. Which character invariably misused English words? The answer is Mrs. Malaprop. Mrs. Malaprop, a character from Richard Brinsley Sheridan's play The Rivals, was notorious for her hilarious misuse of English words. Her name itself became synonymous with the act of unintentionally substituting one word for another, creating comical and often nonsensical phrases. For example, she once said, He is the very pineapple of politeness, instead of pinnacle. And with that final brushstroke, our artful journey through literature comes to a close. Remember, life imitates art, so keep creating your own masterpiece. I'm Montgomery Jones. And I'm Amalia Dupre. Let's part ways for now, until tomorrow arrives. This episode is produced by Classic Studios. See the show notes page for sources and credits. Check out our other podcasts in our network at ClassicStudios.com.